Now, you might not know who Peter Layla is, but every Australian actually should know his name. You see, back in 19, 1854, I should say, he led a group of cranky miners in the Victorian town of Ballarat. They were unhappy with the government, and on the 29th of November, they actually swore allegiance to a new flag, the Southern Cross. And they swore to defend each other's rights and liberties. These men then built a fortified bunker near the Eureka Gold Diggings as their base of operations, anticipating a possible conflict. And there surely was. Early on the morning of the 3rd of December, 300 government troops attacked, and record shows that at least 22 miners, including one woman, and six soldiers were killed. The battle lasted only 15 minutes. The event, of course, is known as the Eureka Stockade, and while most Australians would have heard about it, the details and history may surprise many. And that's the subject of tonight's Talking Points memo. I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by John Roscombe of the Institute of Public Affairs. Hello, John. Um, as always, we're pushed for time. I love you joining me on Bernardi, so thank you. Let's get into it. The Eureka Rebellion was a protest at heavy-handed governments and high levels of taxation by New South Wales and Victorian governments via mining licences. Now, that seems a very sensible pro-business outlook. Why is this sort of Eureka Rebellion being grabbed by the left? Isn't it something the right should embrace? Well, that's exactly right, Corey. It's Australia's Magna Carta moment. It's something every Australian should know about. It was a protest against, as you said, heavy taxation. The miners weren't represented in Parliament. Where the money was going was not transparent to the public. And it's ironic that I'm talking to you from Melbourne about the Eureka Stockade, given what we've just seen here in this city over the last couple of days. The miners were upset about the heavy police tactics about the intimidation, the thuggery of the authorities. And it's a very significant moment in our history, what happened in 1854. Yeah. And this is one of the things, John, that when politicians are out of step with, with uh, the public, things like this happen. And the Eureka Stockade, 113 miners were arrested and detained. 13 of them were taken to Melbourne to face trial. All faced a jury. All were released. And I suspect, and many others do, that the jurists rely more on opposition to the government's actions than a strict legal interpretation in coming to that decision. Uh, it's only natural if governments are out of control that people are going to push back a little bit and maybe, in this case, impact the judicial system too. Well, that's right, Corey. And remember, these miners did not have representation in Parliament. What they were fighting about was the point that they had to pay for a miner's licence regardless of how much gold they succeeded in winning from the ground. So you would pay the same amount uh, whether you struck pay dirt or whether you'd been digging and got nothing for six months. And then the miners said, we are not being represented in Parliament. And again, I'm talking to you from Melbourne, where our Parliament has been suspended. So there were no outlet for the miners to express their views. And this is what happened. They swore an oath to each other and they swore an oath mm. to democracy and to freedom. Now, John, I've only got about a minute left, but there was actually an impact of this. A commission of inquiry was held. They saw the mining, that saw the mining fee removed, corrupt police and goldfields authority were removed. Changes were then made to parliamentary representation, include eight Victorian legislative council members who were elected by the diggies themselves, including Peter Layla. So it proves a bit of rebellion sometimes does work, doesn't it? We can never condone violence, Corey, but sometimes standing up for your right, standing up against authority has outcomes and it had a huge impact on Australian democracy because that then it created uh, the universal vote for men, later for women, it created regular parliaments, it created representation for the miners uh, and it helped create Australian democracy that we can enjoy today. That's right. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. John Roskam, I've got to let it go, but thank you. Thank you for the work you do at the IP.